So this uh, presentation will focus on exploring the connections between manufacturing innovations and information technology. Uh, my name is S. K. Gupta. I'm a professor at University of Maryland at College Park. I'm with the Mechanical Engineering Department and Institute for Systems Research. So manufacturing is a very important segment of our economy. Manufacturing creates jobs for people. Manufacturing produces products that all of us use in our daily life. Manufacturing also has implications for sustainability. All other facets of our life have been significantly influenced by the advent of information technology. So now the question is, what implications information technology has had on manufacturing innovations? And then in turn, how those manufacturing innovations are actually changing our daily life. So before I go further, uh, let me tell you my definition of information technology. Because information technology term get used by many different people in many different contexts. So what I mean by information technology is a combination of computer hardware, CAD, CAM, CAE, PLM software, which are used by manufacturing industry in their daily operations, and networks, which are used for communicating information between machines, between machines and computers, and computers and computers. So now I'm going to talk about eight different innovations that have come about because of advances in information technology. So the first advance or innovation that I want to talk about is virtual manufacturing. So historically, the reason for a lot of cost overruns and delays in manufacturing was due to the fact that design engineers would create a design. This will be given to the manufacturing department Manufacturing engineers will analyze the design, start the production, then they will discover all sorts of problems with the design, then they will go back to the designer, they will make some changes, and then they will give it back to the manufacturing department. So this back and forth between design and manufacturing was very expensive and also was causing a lot of time delays. Information technology has enabled uh, basically virtual manufacturing, so meaning that you can simulate the entire manufacturing process inside the computer without having to physically uh, test out your ideas or produce anything. So this has had a significant impact because now what happens is that you can get instantaneous manufacturability feedback. So you're sitting on your computer, you can run a software, you can simulate the manufacturing process and tell you if you're going to have any manufacturability problems. Clearly, if you have a manufacturability problem, you can fix it in the computer as opposed to creating a part and then discarding it. So that means that you eliminate manufacturing defects. And also, if you have a simulation model, then you can use it to optimize the manufacturing process. On the right-hand side of the screen, uh, I'm showing an example. So this example is from my own lab, where we are basically creating a polymer-based heat exchanger. And in this case, uh, this uh, particular type of polymer, which is thermally conducting, is very difficult to mold. So hence, ability to simulate the manufacturing process in the computer comes in very handy. So by simulating, uh, in this case, the injection molding process, we can figure it out what geometries can be molded, what geometry cannot be molded. And it allows us to create optimal design for these polymer heat exchangers. So what is the implication of man virtual manufacturing uh, technology? So basically, virtual manufacturing technology is giving everyone a manufacturing expert sitting on their desk. So this is a computer which sits on your desk, has the expertise of a manufacturing, and you can basically press a button and it will tell you whether the idea that you have come up with is manufacturable or not. So basically, this means that 
design process is being democratized. So that means that you don't need to own expensive manufacturing shops in order for you to actually participate in the design process. The second implication is that it dramatically reduces time to market. So since you're not wasting all this time in iterating between design and manufacturing, you can actually go to the market really, really quickly. If you have a good idea, then you can start making money with it fairly quickly. Now, since we're eliminating all these defective pieces which get produced and then manufacturing process gets fine-tuned using the physical runs, since we do it using virtual runs, we eliminate a lot of manufacturing waste. And finally, since we are not wasting all the time running the manufacturing process to try things out, we save a lot of cost as well, which then get transferred to the consumers. Second innovation that I'm interested in uh, discussing today is robotics. So robotics is enabled by advances in perception, planning, and control. All of them are enabled by information technology. And robotics has changed the manufacturing industry. Traditionally, robots have been used basically in isolated uh, controlled cells. So the idea being that if a robot is doing a task, then human would not come in that cell. Robot will do the task. Alternatively, a task can be done by a human. So traditionally, robotics have been used in high volume cells, such as production of automotives, where uh, cars, your structural element will be welded or painted by the robotics technology. But this picture is now beginning to change. What is happening is that people are inventing or developing robots, which actually can work side by side of humans. So these are robots are safe with respect to human, so they can work together with human. Now, right hand side, the bottom portion, I'm showing an image from uh, our lab where we have a robot and a human standing next to each other. There are four Microsoft Connect sensor which actually track the human. And if human starts coming very close to the robot and there is an imminent danger of collision between the human and robot, then our software will shut off the robot. So this is a step towards making robots safe and hence work alongside the humans. So these new uh, innovations in robotics basically mean that humans and robot can collaborate as opposed to being in their own separate areas and uh, doing their own individual tasks. So now it means that robots can be actually used in a wide variety of different manufacturing tasks, as opposed to few high production run tasks where historically robots have been used. And also an implication is that if robots and humans can work together where robots do the task in which they are good at and humans do the task in which they are good at, Overall, manufacturing can become competitive in high labor uh, cost markets where the labor rates are very high. So by putting hum robots there, we can bring the labor cost, net labor cost down, and yet make sure that robots and humans can work together in a really complex manufacturing task. Third innovation that I want to talk about is 3D printing. This is also known as additive manufacturing. So the idea behind 3D printing is that you create a three-dimensional model of a part that you are interested in creating. And then you have a 3D printing machine, which takes this model and prints it layer by layer. So you keep adding one layer at a time, and that creates the entire part for you. This requires very little expertise for anybody to use. So it's, in a way, similar the way desktop publishing and the printing was. So everybody can create their own document and print it. Here, the idea is similar. Everybody can design their own part and print it. Now, this entire field has been enabled by advances in 3D geometric modeling, three-dimensional CAD, simulation, and planning. There have been dramatic reduction in the cost of this equipment. 
When this technology originally arrived, uh, 3D printing machines were costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now there are machines in the market which actually cost less than $2,000. So that means that lots of people can afford it and start playing with this technology. So this image shows you uh, a 3D printer machine from a company named Stratasys. The middle uh, image shows you one of the vehicle which has been printed using a 3D printing technology. In our lab, we actually use 3D printing to print uh, robots. So I teach a course where student design bio-inspired robot and we print them. So I'm going to show you a little clipping. So these are robots that you're seeing, structural members for these robots were actually printed using 3D printing technology. So this is an illustration of how 3D printing technology is actually enabling uh, people to design the new things and quickly create them and then start utilizing them. And this also shows you how 3D printing is actually revolutionizing education as well. So implications of 3D printing is that manufacturing is now going to be highly distributed. So imagine that lots of people having their own 3D printers which are on the network and they can all you know, go ahead and receive orders on the internet and start printing things. So also it means that people can make their own replacement parts. So if you have your cell phone cover, it breaks, you can print one yourself. It also enables new business model. So if you have a 3D printer in your basement or in your garage, and you have nothing scheduled to run on it, you can sell the time for your 3D printer on an online market. People can buy time on your 3D printer. And hence, you can sit and make money in your home. And it is also enabling new class of products. So there's a lot of talk about uh, custom implants to be used in Field, med medical field, where people are interested in using 3D printing. Uh, aerospace component tend to be low volume production run, so this technology can be used to create some aerospace components. People are even talking about printing food. People in tissue engineering are talking about printing body organs. So this technology is going to have far reaching impact on the way manufacturing or the next generation manufacturing is going to change and embrace this technology. Next innovation that I want to talk about is computer-controlled non-traditional machining. So traditional way of machining thing was that you would have a tool, which will be a drill bit, or a milling bit, or a saw, which you will move. And this tool bit will remove the material. And that's how you will shape things, if you want, wanted to use a subtractive process. Recent advances in planning, reasoning, and control are now enabling, actually, to use very non-traditional tools. You can actually use water to cut things. You can use laser to cut things. So the idea is that computer controls the laser and the water. And using laser and water, you can sculpt shapes. This also enables cutting shapes, which would have been impossible to cut using a traditional uh, contact base uh, or metal or ceramic cutter based tools. And uh, right hand side of this image shows some representative uh, parts which have been cut using water jet machining. So implications of this technology is that you can actually create custom parts at very low cost because using laser cutters and water jet cutting, you can actually cut parts in few minutes, which would have taken you hours or days to cut it using traditional methods. The material choice has significantly expanded. Actually, you can cut titanium using these technologies. And this also means that overall setup time has been dramatically reduced because both water jet cutting and laser cutting do not require any complicated fixturing or holding the part in the machine. You just throw your raw stock in the machine and you start cutting. 
The next innovation that I want to talk about is miniaturization. So small parts are desirable for a wide variety of different reasons. One reason is that if you are making things very, very small, you can exploit new physical phenomena. And that has really benefit for you. Also, if you are going to make small parts, they are energy efficient. They don't consume as much energy. And they're space efficient. They're very compact. So there has been significant interest in developing processes which can make very, very small parts. Now, clearly, using traditional manufacturing, it's very difficult to make small parts because we are limited by the size of our hands. So if you want to use, or if you want to make really small parts, then we have to rely on computer-controlled machines, which are going to make these very tiny, small parts, which sometimes we may not even be able to see with our naked eyes. So there are many new processes which have been developed, which can make small parts in metal, small parts in plastic, small parts in ceramic. So there are lots of processes which have been invented over the last few years, all enabled by advances in controlled modeling and simulation and completely computer controlled processes. Right hand side of the, the slide shows some plastic parts, it's very, very tiny plastic parts uh, from one of the commercial miniature injection molding uh, company. And the bottom of the slide shows some of the small part which we have made in our lab. Implications of miniaturization are that the transportation cost is very low because you're making things which are very small, both in size and weight. And size and weight are the two major contributors when you are looking at the transportation cost. So that enables easy import and easy export. So that means that you can make things in the United States and export them. And transportation cost is not going to kill you. But it also means that somebody else can create these miniature parts and ship them to you, or you can import them, and transportation cost is still going to be low. Small parts are difficult to counterfeit because features are very small. Most of them use very sophisticated machinery to make them, so they tend to be difficult to counterfeit. And also, small parts are enabling a wide variety of new product possibilities in medical sector as well as consumer electronic sector. So your latest iPhone is actually enabled by this innovations in miniaturization. The next uh, manufacturing innovation that I want to talk about is advanced polymer composites. So you can think about raw polymer. It is thermally insulating. It's not very strong. You can make some toys and some other non-structural component. But typically, you would not think about using your traditional plastic or polymer to make high performance components. But what has been happening is that if you put certain type of nanoscale and microscale ingredient in these polymers and plastic, you can dramatically change their properties. So it turns out that you can make lightweight but very high strength material if you mix the polymer with carbon fillers in them. You can also create materials which are thermally conducting, so they will take away the heat, but electrically insulating. So you can literally do magic by combining these ingredients and creating these new materials. Now, remember, processing these materials is challenging. Design is very challenging. And predicting properties of this polymer is challenging. So all of it requires high performance computing and simulations to make sure that you can actually design things which are going to work the way you want them to work. On the right hand side of the image, I'm showing a holder for a motor, for a small motor. The top image shows your regular polymer. In that case, if you hold the motor in that regular polymer as the motor runs, it heats up and it starts melting the polymer and motor pops out of it. 
on the lower image, I'm showing you a motor holder, which is made out of advanced polymer composite, which is thermally conducting but electrically insulating. So in that case, what happens is that as motor generates heat, this thermally conducting polymer takes the heat, conducts it away from the motor, and hence there's no melting of the polymer. So you can actually hold the motor in this thermally conducting polymer, and this thermally conducting polymer is acting as a heat sink. So you have a structure which is not only holding the motor, but in a structure which is also serving as a heat sinks, so you have created a multifunctional structure. Implication of this technology is that this is causing shift from metal. So traditionally, material of choice in engineering has been metals. They are strong, they're well behaved, we understand them. But as people are creating these advanced polymers, they are moving away from metals to polymers and ceramics. These advanced polymers are also creating new product possibilities in automotive sector. They are creating new product possibilities in batteries. They are creating new product possibilities in aerospace sectors. The next innovation that I want to talk about is energy efficient manufacturing. So manufacturing processes traditionally consume a lot of energy. And it turns out that if you look at uh, different report which come sector by sector, actually manufacturing sector is one of the largest consumer of energy in the world. What happens in many uh, manufacturing processes that you basically take the material, heat it, and then cool it. So this heating and cooling process actually wastes a lot of energy. You dump the energy into the part to elevate the temperature, then you cool it down, right? So it turns out that this style of making things actually is wasting a lot of energy. So people have been looking into combining energy harvesting, new equipment design, which actually is much more efficient in terms of energy utilization, process control, which makes sure that you deliver energy at the right time, at the right place, and you don't waste energy. The part design, which can also have a significant impact on how much energy is going to be consumed. So all of these factors combined together now can create manufacturing processes, which actually are beginning to reduce overall energy consumed by the process. And all of this work, again, is enabled by simulations, modeling, monitoring, control, and also now people are building this life cycle inventory databases which tell you that for which material and which process, how much energy you're gonna consume. So during design stage, you can make informed choice from the energy point of view. A right hand side of this image is just showing uh, basically injection molding machine which consumes a lot of, which one of the process which consumes a lot of energy and a part which get made on the injection molding machine. So in this case, actually it turns out that if you did some alteration to the process as well as alteration to the design, you can actually make your process significantly more efficient from energy consumption point of view. So implication for this innovation is that it's creating new demand for energy efficient component technology. So energy efficient actuators, insulation technology, so all of these are finding home in manufacturing industry. And there's a shift in process landscape because the things which were energy intensive, if you can improve their efficiency, then the process which you would have considered to be unattractive is suddenly gonna be very attractive and you wanna use it. And also manufacturing will become competitive in the areas where traditionally the energy costs have been very high once we can actually make manufacturing energy efficient. And also overall, if we can make manufacturing energy efficient, then the net demand of energy from the manufacturing sector will start coming down. Last innovation that I want to discuss today is 
the impact that internet has had on manufacturing or offering people manufacturing services. So everybody now with the internet connection actually has access to manufacturing services. There are three different models which are out there. So one is matchmaking model where you basically go to a brokering service, you give them your blueprint or your design, they find somebody who can make the things for you and these people will bid on your task and you select and you run with them. Second model is direct. You go to a manufacturer and you say, here's my part, can you make it? All transaction being happening over the internet, right? So you upload your file, they take a look at it, they give you a quote and if you like, you can get them to make. Or indirect, meaning that there's a company with whom you negotiate, they will then find somebody who will make it, but you directly work with them and they can offer you all kind of services which include uh, your manufacturability analysis services, engineering analysis services, as well as different kind of inspection that you may need. I'm going to quickly play a video of a little experiment that we did in our lab. It shows how internet can actually be used to speed up the manufacturing. Peter needs to make a flash mount for a mobile robot. He also needs his part on the same day. For this purpose, he uses the laser jet cutting machine online web service available at the University of Maryland's Advanced Manufacturing Laboratory. This service can manufacture a part by using the uploaded part design within a few minutes. First, he must request a quote for the part. Here, he uploads the following data. The design of the part in DXF format, DXF file units, material type, material thickness, and the desired edge quality. Before he can proceed further, he must create a CAD design for the part. Peter is now making the 2D part drawing of the flash mount in a software called LibreCAD. He starts with the main structure of the part. The flash mount fixes to the front of a mobile robot and serves the purpose of carrying a flashlight while the robot operates in dimly lit areas. One hole in the top center acts as a circular mount, and two smaller holes at the bottom fix the flash mount to the robot frame. Finally, the part drawing is saved as part.dxf. The part design that was just created is now uploaded to the web page. The DXF file units are in inches. The material type is black acrylic. The material thickness is 0.116 inches, and the edge quality is standard. After these design details are uploaded, the quote for the part is obtained. Peter is informed that the part is manufacturable. The cutting time is only four minutes and a one-day delivery option is available. He returns to the main menu, selects a one-day delivery option, and submits an order for the part. Peter receives a Skype call four minutes later from the advanced manufacturing lab and is informed that the part he has just ordered has been fabricated and is ready for pickup. This video of a live demonstration shows how the laser jet cutting machine web service can be used to turn a CAD design into a part in only a few minutes. The underlying framework of the system also allows a web-based computer agent to automatically connect to the laser jet cutting machine web service, request a quote on the desired part, and subsequently place an order to manufacture the part. So the implication of this particular innovation are that it's truly democratizing the innovation. Everybody with a computer an internet connection can actually design and innovate. And they, then they can use manufacturing services on the internet. So they don't have to build infrastructure or buy a machine in order for them to create or, or innovate. Now clearly, this also means that traditional machine shop business model is under threat. So classically, the machine shop, which were just operating and hoping that customer will come in or drive in and give them business, they have to think about different model. And this also is posing new challenges for IP protection. So now what happens when you actually give somebody your CAD model? They can, can they misuse it? Can they somehow benefit from it before you benefit from it? So this means that scaling up this model will require new innovations in contracting and procurement processes where people are assured 
that, uh, that their innovation actually are not going to be compromised or, or misused by others. So I want to share some examples with you to make these ideas that which I presented a little bit more concrete. So th the type of manufacturing innovations that I talked about it, their net effect is the following. So companies are now able to actually release new models of smartphones every 9 to 12 months. So product development time has gone down dramatically. Cost of automobiles actually have gone down in the last 20 years in terms of constant dollars, despite them adding many new features. So actually, in terms of constant dollar, new Toyota Corolla actually costs less now than it did in 1992 in terms of constant dollars. Yet, they offer you ABS brakes. They offer you all sorts of airbags and safety features. Boeing 787 fuel efficiency is improved by 20% by use of advanced composites. Injection molding uh, companies are reporting that they can reduce energy consumption by 40% by use of improved equipment as well as operation. Custom dental implant can now actually be produced in a matter of few days based upon the specific uh, needs for an individual customer or patient. Coronary stent, which are considered uh, one of the great achievements of modern medicine, actually owe their existence to laser cutting. So advancement in laser cutting actually enabled uh, coronary stents. So in summary, information technology enabled innovations uh, or manufacturing innovations are, ha are expected to have dramatic impact. For individuals, this means reduction in cost. So you can buy cheaper things. It means things are going to get to market faster. It also means that you're going to get products with much improved performance and functionality. And also, you're going to get new products. In terms of society, what it means is that increasingly, a larger segment of society can participate in the innovation process. So innovation is not restricted to people who have access to capital and a lot of manufacturing infrastructure. With a computer and an internet, everybody can participate in the innovation process. Also, innovations in manufacturing are having positive impact on the environment. So they are reducing environmental impact of manufacturing activities. Finally, in terms of society, all these manufacturing innovation are also mean that manufacturing industry landscape shifts very quickly, both in terms of location, so meaning that manufacturing, which was thriving in one location, goes out of business somewhere else it migrates to because new manufacturing innovation has caused that shift. And also from employment perspective. So if new manufacturing innovation actually creates many more jobs, but it also means that somewhere else it has eliminated jobs. We are just beginning to see the impact of information technology enabled manufacturing innovations. As manufacturing industry embraces these innovations more and more, uh, we would see a very different world. Thank you very much for your attention.